Ricky Thompson, and uh, the Ricky part of my name comes from New Zealand, actually, uh, and that's where my both my parents were born in New Zealand, on the at the bottom of the North Island, uh, very close to Wellington. Okay. So Ricky is a it's a Maori name, uh, so that's why it's it's in my name, and uh, but I was born in Australia. Um, my parents emigrated there in early 70s to Australia and it, it, it was at a time when there was a lot of opportunities in Australia, a lot of uh, land and, and kind of a uh, chance to start um, businesses and, and kind of it was a good time to emigrate to Australia, they yeah. needed workers and so it, quite a lot of New Zealanders went at that time. Yeah, so it was a bit like what Sweden was to Finland. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, my mum was a singer and she, she was really uh, into the to the Māori singing as well and, and sort of took part in a lot of uh, Māori choirs and yeah. the, the singing tradition is really, really strong there. And Māori people are, in general are great, um, great musicians, very musical people. It's funny, but I've heard that sentence before. Okay. Yeah. Interviewing people, many people have said that my mother was a singer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I guess that's the the, the thing with um, music is that it, when it's in the family, it somehow gets passed down very easily, if, even if you don't uh, consciously try to do that. school actually they, they had this day where you, where you they bought instruments to look at and you, and you could try oh. instruments you know and that was that was really fun but um, but there was some kind of system where they had limited number of instruments and and you had to sort of say what you were interested in but I, I remember being offered uh, the flute because it uh, Nobody else wanted to play it, and it, and it was kind of the only only instrument left at, yeah. that, at that stage. So I remember as a young child thinking, "Well, oh, okay, I'll try. I'll try that." And, okay. And uh, and that that became actually my first um, main instrument. I, I got really into flute playing, and I went right right through, and actually did a, a whole degree in in classical flute, but. Uh, I, d I remember part way through the degree really questioning what I was doing, you know, like, do I really want to play in an orchestra and, and also what, what is this um, classical music, right? like how does it connect to me as a guy who was born in Australia and with heritage from New Zealand and from, from England as well, from Scotland and from uh, the south of England and just feeling like you know what? How how does that music connect to me? What it, what is it exactly? Yeah. Actually, I was always playing um, electric bass in in bands, and I'd I'd already been into that before I started the classical flute studies. Okay. So I was um, playing in in rock bands and sort of doing rock pop things on electric bass. Um, but then during my studies, I got more interested in jazz and other forms of of music. Um, so then I got interested in the double bass and because it's such a needed instrument in, in so many different contexts you get asked to play gigs and uh, so it, it gradually kind of I got more and more work as a bass player and um, and flute players were not that in demand <laughs> so, so it started to kind of take over a bit during yeah. the studies.
of course, very different sound. And, but yeah, same blowing technique. It's, it's kind of like a like a low uh, whistle if you try and produce a low whistle. starting to come. <laughs> no, I don't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. So when, when was it that you first moved out from Australia? Uh, I, st I started traveling, um, let me see, I, f I finished my music degree in 93 and um, at that time I was kind of um, interested in exploring the world of course and, uh, and, th and thinking about my, my heritage and you know, particularly musically what, what is my music, what should I be doing as a musician, how, how do I connect to my own culture, what is my culture, and this, these are big questions that um, particularly being, in, being born in Australia at that time and having heritage from other places, um, and Australia itself has become a very multicultural mm -hmm. land, um, so you're exposed to, to many different cultures growing up there. And then, of course, you have the, the ancient um, Aboriginal culture there. Um, so you start to wonder where, what is your place within within all this. If if you're if you're not born into the Aboriginal society, um, then you're amongst all all of the other people in Australia that have really mixed heritage. And so what is what's Australian? music, what's Australian heritage, it's, it's a very mixed bag of influences. Oh, yeah. um, so that, that's what kind of set, set me off on uh, wanting to explore the, the world. I was in Tanzania, as I say, for three years, and, um, but then after that I, I travelled uh, more in, in different regions of Africa and, um, and ended up staying in Zambia for another two years after that. So I had this kind of five-year period in, in Africa, um, and uh, yeah, I, I, as you know about the continent, it, it's incredibly um, diverse culturally and musically. And so the more I started traveling and exploring other regions of Africa, the more I realized the the huge amount of uh, musical diversity that exists there. powerful in, in many many different forms and, and different cultural contexts but the, the act of, of playing music with other people and and the, and the kind of physical sensation and the, all the vibrations that are that are happening they must they must do some good I yeah. think which is yeah. must be one of the reasons why music exists you know this this idea of musicians um, being inspired by other sounds and, and uh, other musical cultures that they have not um, grown up in is, mm -hmm. is something that is not not new. Of course, it's all, it, no. musicians have always been interested in uh, in sound in general and yeah. discovering new sounds and new ways of producing sound. And so I kind of kind of see it as a very natural part of being a musician as well. But what I found. What I find fascinating still is that it relies so much on um, the human contact, you know, and the, and the, the contact between people and the, the kind of communication between people, the dialogue and, and, and the openness that's required there and the kind of uh, respect and curiosity uh, about each other's music and culture. And that can have really... Um, 
positive effects in many ways. I think it, it artistically, of course, produces really interesting uh, new music. Um, but but just a, on a just just between people, it's an incredible, incredibly important thing, especially in the time that we live at at the moment. I yeah. think you know this the being able to actually connect with other people who are who don't share uh, the same background as you and who've grown up in a different cultural context but to be able to have this this kind of open dialogue and learn from each other and respect one another is um, a great great skill and great need for our world I think.